Hello there everyone and welcome back to another video. Now this one is coming by popular request from Instagram. So recently I uploaded a post on Wilson's theorem, which is one of my favorite theorems in number theory. It basically says that P is a prime number if and only if this congruence here is true. P minus one factorial is congruent to minus one mod P. So in other words, P minus one factorial plus one is some multiple of p. Now I asked if you wanted to see the proof of this, so this is what this video is all about. Just before we get into it, please do hit that subscribe button and please do hit the like button as well. So there's been some really good support recently, so let's keep it up. Hopefully I can reach 100 subscribers soon and we'll have a special video for that. Okay, so the point of this video is threefold. Firstly, we're going to see an example. Then I'm going to do the proof, and then I'm going to talk about what's actually wrong with this theorem, why it's maybe not used that much. So an example first. We know that p equals 5 is prime. We know that p equals 5 is prime because it has no other divisors other than 1 and 5. So let's use uh, Wilson's theorem. So using Wilson's theorem, We get, so 5 take away 1 factorial, well this is equal to 4 factorial, and 4 factorial is nothing more than 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 times 1, so this is 24. Okay, now we need to check if this is congruent to minus 1 mod 5. So is 24 congruent to minus 1 mod 5? Now remember the definition of congruence. A is congruent to B uh, mod N if and only if A minus B, or rather N divides A minus B. So in other words, A minus B is some multiple of N. Okay, so if you haven't seen that definition before, it's a fairly common definition in number theory. So let's check with uh, this here. So we need to check this condition here. Is a minus b a multiple of n? So is 24 minus minus 1 a multiple of 5? Let's have a look. So 24 minus minus 1 um, is equal to 25, which is equal to 5 times 5. So yes. Uh, so summarizing for p equals 5, we do have uh, p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p. Excellent. So we've seen an example. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, we know 5 is a prime number. So what is the use in this? And I will talk about that a little bit later. But for now, on to the proof. Okay. And you might also be thinking, why on earth does this have to be a prime number? Surely this would work with any old number. And this is where we see the power of prime numbers. Okay, so let's have a look at what p minus 1 factorial is. This is p minus 1 times p minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, the idea now because we're taking congruences, we want to pair off each element with its multiplicative inverse. So what I mean by this, if we have an element A, so this is a number B, such that AB is congruent to 1 mod n. Okay, so that's our plan. Now the key observation here is that the integers, the integers mod p form a field. Again, if you haven't seen what this thing means, it's basically a special type of set with two operations and 
Under addition and multiplication, everything has nice inverses. So basically, we can divide everything other than zero, of course, but yeah, we can divide everything. So this implies that every element, or every non-zero element, has an inverse. This is great. So basically, these elements here, these elements here can all be paired off nicely with their multiplicative inverse. And this is going to allow us to cancel everything nicely. However, there is one caveat to this. So we need to check We need to check which elements are their own inverses. I.e., which elements x have x squared is congruent to 1 mod p. Okay, and this is the other part where b and a prime is really important. So we have this part here. Only the integers mod a prime form a field, not the integers mod any composite number. So it's very important that they're prime. And another very important use of primes is here. Okay, so if x squared is congruent to 1 mod p, this implies that x squared take, a one, take away 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so in other words, by the definition of congruence, this tells us that p divides x squared minus 1. But hang on, we should recognize x squared minus 1 as something very common in mathematics. This is just a difference of two squares. So in other words, p divides x minus 1 times x plus 1. And another very common result in primes, which is very easy to check, that if we have a prime number dividing a product, a, b, then we have p divides a or p divides b. Okay, so here we can just apply that. So we have that p divides x minus 1, or p divides x plus 1. So where do we go from there? Well, plugging this back into the definition of congruence, we get x is congruent to 1 mod p. And here we get x is congruent to negative 1 mod p. And note that bringing this minus 1 back into the world of p, we get p take away 1 mod p. So what have we shown here? Well, we've shown the only elements uh, mod p, which are their own inverses, are 1 and p minus 1. So if we head back to our p minus 1 factorial, which was p minus 1 times p minus 2 times 3 times 2 times 1, so all of these elements here, p minus 2, p minus 3, all the way down to 3 and 2, are going to cancel because they are paired with their multiplicative inverse. So all we are left with then is p minus 1 and 1. So writing this out, we get p minus 1 factorial is congruent to p minus 1 times 1 mod p. And just as we did up here, we can change p minus 1 to minus 1. So this is indeed congruent to minus 1 mod p. And that is the proof of Wilson's theorem. Proof done. Yay. Okay, so we've proved it. p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p. But don't forget, this is only for p prime. If p is not a prime here, this does not work at all. Because we use the fact that it's a prime here, and we also use the fact that it's a prime here. Integers 1p form a field. OK, finally, just let me just talk about the limitations. 
Okay, so performing factorials requires a lot of computing power. Requires a lot of computing power. And if you go onto your calculator now and you try to calculate above, say, 100 factorial, your calculator simply won't do it. So the limitation of Wilson's theorem is, it, for large p, it's not really feasible to use. However, it's still a beautiful theorem. It's still a really great result, and the proof is really slick. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Something a little bit different, uh, a bit of number theory, which is some of my favorite areas of mathematics. Um, it's a little bit longer than usual, so let me know if you enjoy it, if you've made it this far. If you have made it this far, please do hit that like button. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also, follow me on Instagram. This is where the request for this video came, and I post on there fairly frequently. Okay, guys, have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.